Welcome back to Mycology Exploration, Home Mycology Made Easy, sharing what has worked for us as we explore the mystery and magic that fungi is. We have had an overwhelmingly positive response to our MYA video where we added nutritional yeast to MEA. Many of you have discovered what we have, that less is more when it comes to the amount of nutrients and dextrose in producing rhizomorphic growth. It's all about experimentation, seeing what works best for you in your environment. Nature loves courage. You make the commitment and nature will respond to that commitment by removing impossible obstacles. Dream the impossible dream and the world will not grind you under. It will lift you up. This is the trick. This is what all these teachers and philosophers who really counted, who really touched the all-chemical gold, this is what they understood. This is the shamanic dance in the waterfall. This is how magic is done, by hurling yourself into the abyss and discovering it's a feather bed. We'd love to hear in the comments if you know who that quote is from. Make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when we have new videos for you. And if you enjoy foraging for mushrooms, we're going to start uploading shorts where you can help us identify fungi we find out in the wild. When working with spores or cloning best fruits, it is always our goal to create a liquid culture. Liquid culture is mycelium suspended in nutrition. It's like a liquid petri dish without the agar in a jar. To achieve this, whether we're starting with spores or cloning, we begin the process with agar dishes. You may have seen our water agar video where we share our base agar recipe. It is simply agar and boiling purified water. The base of all of our recipes is agar, and living gen agar agar is simply the best for home mycology. Clean, clear, easy to use, non-GMO. 100% red algae for perfect dishes or no pour jars every time. Living Gen has generously offered the home mycology community 10% off their agar agar with code mycology 10 off or just follow the link in the description below. They offer a low cost 4 ounce along with a 12 and 32 ounce size easy to use standing bag. Water agar has proven for us to be the best recipe when dealing with spores and clones. The idea behind water agar is to give just enough nutrients for the mycelium to branch out while giving very little nutrients for contamination to grow. The resulting growth is generally enough to be able to transfer a clean sample to a more nutrient-dense dish to continue the transferring process. As this process evolves, you will add nutrients to further encourage rhizomorphic growth so you can clearly tell where the best entry points for transfers are occurring. We have discovered that less nutrients seem to be best when it comes to rhizomorphic growth. It seems that if you starve the mycelium, it really branches out to search for more nutrients, resulting in a branched look similar to a root system. The more nutrients you add, it seems to spread out in a more fluffy tomatoes style, eating on all the abundance. As you research, you find that rhizomorphic and tomatoes will both produce beautiful mushrooms, but it's easier to determine the most viable points to make successful transfers due to the antlering and rhizomorphic growth. Our water agar recipe is simply 10 grams of agar to 500 milliliters of purified boiling water. MEA, or malt extract agar, is the go-to agar recipe for home mycologists. It provides the perfect adjustable recipe for growing out contaminant-free mycelium cultures. The great thing that we have discovered with malt extract is you can adjust the amount of nutrients and dextrose according to how much you want to feed your cultures. We started with the standard 10 gram agar, 10 gram malt extract per 500 milliliters of purified water and definitely got quick tomentose growth, but it was hard to determine what was good mycelium and what was possible contamination. 
We have since come up with a standard MEA recipe that works to promote the onset of rhizomorphic growth while reducing the chance of contamination by using a 10 gram agar, 7.5 gram malt extract to 500 milliliters of purified water. Through much research, we found that adjusting levels of nutrients really changed the growth to a more rhizomorphic pattern. When we dialed back the malt extract a little, the mycelium seemed to stretch out searching for nutrients while containing and or eliminating any contamination. When cloning or working with spores, we have found water agar to be the best recipe to start with. We then transfer to MEA plates, then a final transfer to MYA gives us the rhizomorphic growth we desire. There seems to be some confusion around malt extract and light malt extract. There are various malt extracts including light, amber, extra light, pilsen, wheat, rye, and even dark extracts which are used for brewing various styles of beer. All indicators show that any malt extract will work, but it seems that light malt extract is preferred in mycology. The malt extract we use and that is shown in our videos is actually a light malt extract. Using 500 milliliters of boiling, purified, or distilled water, mix 10 grams of agar and 7.5 grams of malt extract. Pressure cook for no longer than 20 minutes at 15 PSI so you don't caramelize the sugars or overcook the nutrients. Allow the MEA to cool between 120 and 140 degrees, then you're ready to pour. MYA, or malt yeast agar, is an amazing agar recipe. This recipe gives the perfect nutritional source from the malt extract, but the addition of nutritional yeast will promote that booming rhizomorphic growth in your mycelium cultures. Nutritional yeast can be found in most health stores or online and comes in various forms from powdered to large flake. Both of these are good, but you do want to make sure you grind it to as fine of a powder as you can. We experimented with many different recipes and we really feel like we perfected this one. So when creating 500 milliliters of agar or agar, you want to use 10 grams of agar 7.5 grams of malt extract, 0.25 grams of nutritional yeast. Yes, that's 0.25 grams of the nutritional yeast, again, to create 500 milliliters. When working with the nutritional yeast, even when you created a fine powder, it will leave a cloudiness to your agar and particulates. We've tried straining this out and it's still there and it's okay. We have not experienced any contamination. It's been a really positive recipe with just so much rhizomorphic growth. So the particulates and the cloudiness are just not a problem at all. Again, as a reminder, if you have any condensation, just flip your Petri dishes or your jars upside down. We recently had a comment asking about the temperature of your agar before you actually pour it. And we have found in between 120 to 140 degrees is just the perfect cooling temperature to start pouring. We love hearing from you in the comments below. Thanks so much for hitting that subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified when we have new videos for you.